Hello and welcome again to another day of Grace and Grit with Adventist Frontier Missions. It has been a long week. We have been doing a lot of studying from morning until evening. And the students had asked me, hey, can we come Sunday morning so we can have from 8 to 12 and then be done and that way we can have other activities. And I have been away from my family for over a week, so I said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So we had classes from 8 to 12. We were doing systematic theology with these theology students. And as we finished at 12, I remember that I was walking towards the road where I was going to get the bus that was going to take me to see my wife and kids. And a group of students were walking towards the river. And one of them, Hector, he said, hey, pastor, come on swimming with us. And I say, next time I will do it. And sure enough, I took the bus four hours, four and a half hours later, I was home with my family and we were enjoying a great afternoon or the rest of the afternoon that was left. And then all of a sudden I receive a phone call. One of those phone calls that, that you don't want to get. And sure enough, David was the student who said, hey, pastor, have you heard the news? I said, no, what, what happened? So he said, we went swimming in the river, and while we were there, uh, Hector jumped into the, into the river, and it seemed as if he was drowning. But uh, we did not believe it, because he was uh, special forces from the army. And by the time we realized that he was for real, we tried, Pastor, but there was nothing that we could do. And he's not with us anymore. He's resting. And I, I remember that I, when I heard that, I could not believe it. Um, I had a hard time going to bed that night. And I was thinking, and the things that came, were coming to my mind were the encounters I had had with Hector. Hector uh, had been a special forces uh, in the army for several years. And after that, he went back to the Amazon area in Ecuador. And when he was there, um, he had a problem. He developed a health problem and he realized that he needed surgery or he was going to die. Things came very quickly. And the only person that could do that surgery for him was a medical school, a medical student who was probably in his fourth or fifth year. He had never uh, really had that kind of surgery. But Hector knew that there was nothing else, that there was no other hope. So he prayed and he said, hey, if there is a God, please preserve my life and I will do anything I can to get to know you. The last thing he remembered was that he went to sleep and then when he woke up and he realized that he was still alive, he said, God, I want to get to know you. To make a long story short, uh, some theology students came to that area of the country and they were canvassing, they were selling books. And then he realized that there was a school where he could go and learn theology, he could learn about God and become a pastor. So he traveled almost 20 hours from where he lived to the place where he started studying. But because of the time that he had spent uh, in war, he had developed some challenges that that, that stayed with him for a while. And when I met Hector, I remember that he was selling books. He was trying to, to sell books to me. And I started hearing stories about Hector. Uh, Hector, sometimes he would be at the dorm and two, three in the morning, he would go to the restroom and he would stay in the hall and he would hide in the hall. And then as students were woke up, if anybody needed to go to the restroom, uh, he would grab them from the back and he would scare them. And, and people were really scared of him. And they were had a hard time with, with Hector. But something that they started noticing is that every day, as evening came, the light in Hector's uh, room would stay on for a long time. And as people started walking uh, by his room, they realized that he was spending time in prayer. And he was saying, God, you know what I need. Please change me. Please transform me. And year after year, God was doing an amazing work in the life of Hector. 
The first time Hector tried to sell books, I remember that uh, he had a challenge because he would stutter and he couldn't. But two, three years after that, he became the number one salesperson in the whole team. And it was so successful, his experience, that a conference had already hired him even before he had finished so that he would become the publishing director for the conference. But that Sunday, I never realized that it was going to be the last Sunday that I was going to see Hector alive again. As I was traveling on Monday back to school, I was thinking, what am I going to share with the students? I, I myself was like, God, how? I don't understand. And as I arrived at the school, the students came and met me on the road as I was getting off the bus. And we all gathered together and we were crying. And we were all dealing with the loss of a good friend, of a great person. And then I was trying to see, God, what are you going to do out of this? We got together, all of us, we were embracing. And I, and I remember saying, so, so what are we going to learn from this experience? God, please come and minister to us. And I'll never forget that many of the students started apologizing to each other. And they started saying things that we were not aware that existed. And they say, hey, you know, I, I want to ask forgiveness. I have carried this resentment in my heart for a long time. I want to apologize to you. I remember that a student came to me. He said, you know, pastor, since the time you came to this school, I did not like you and I still don't like you. And I remember that we gave a big hug. And at the end of, of many tears, I remember that the students promised, hey, we are going to live our lives to make a difference in this world, not only for ourselves and for what is calling us, but for the life of our friend, Hector. I was calculating about 13, 14 years has been since that happened. And today, many of those pastors are leaders in different places in South America. They decided that what happened that day was going to be an opportunity for them to live their lives for God. And I'm wondering, I'm, I'm wondering with you, you know, we are, we are in the midst of this COVID-19. Many challenging things are happening around the world, but the key is this, what are we going to do with that? I want to suggest to you that perhaps one of the things that we can do is to think are there relationships that are broken that could be mended? Are there people that I, I feel resentment against and that I can apologize, that I can pray and I can ask God to bring healing? Could it be that this be, can become an opportunity for us to become closer? And I would like to think that what Peter says in 2 Peter 3, 9, he says, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, with me, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare since everything will be destroyed in this way the question that he asks is what kind of people ought you to be you ought to live holy and godly lives i hope that what we are experiencing today will give us the opportunity to rededicate our lives to live them fully for god May your life, may my life shine. May this experience that we have had and that we are having give us the strength and the wisdom to come out of it with much more commitment to finish what God has called us to do. I pray that wherever you are, as you spend time with God alone with Him, that you will come to decide what it is that needs to change in your life because of what you have experienced in COVID-19. May God continue to be with you. May God continue to guide and bless your life.
Let us pray. Father God, as I am reminded of this experience, I realize that you can bring out of pain and death relationships that are restored and commitments that are renewed. I pray that you will be with each person who is watching at this moment this video and that you will help us all to recommit our lives to you, to restore relationships that might be broken so that we may learn that the times in which we live are special ones and we need to live our lives for you. Continue to guide, continue to direct each one of us, I pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Somewhere on this earth, in the heart of a foreign land, a family with a passion is living their mission plan. Bringing God's truth to a hungry, thirsty tribe Knowing where their lives are always on the line Missionaries need missionaries too They need the prayers of loved ones They need love from me and you And when they just like Christ Make the ultimate sacrifice Someday in heaven they'll thank you Cause you're a missionary too Someday in heaven they'll thank you For the things your prayers have brought them through and Your mission is accomplished Oh, thank you You're a missionary You're a missionary too You're a missionary